in this lecture we are going to deal with the performance analysis of a single cycle process so performance an analysis basically deals with calculation of how much time a, a an instruction will take for execution in a particular processor that is meant by the performance analysis so since it is a single cycle processor each instruction in the single cycle processor takes one clock cycle to execute since it is a single cycle processor so the cpi that is clock cycles per instruction will be one for a single cycle processor so for, for performing the performance analysis of a single cycle processor first we need to find out what is meant by the critical path of a particular instruction for example we are going to deal uh, an instruction on a ldr so for LDR, what is the critical path uh, which has to be taken? That is what you are going to calculate or that is what you are going to see. So this is a critical path for a uh, LDR instruction. So critical path means it is a path through which uh, the instruction or the data will be flowing from the execution of the, uh, the, the instruction from the starting of the execution that is from PC till the uh, writing back the result in the case of load you are loading a data from a memory or you are reading from a data from a memory and you are writing back to the register file so the instruction starts with the program counter then it will be moving through this path which is shown in the blue color and finally the result will be written back to the file register so this is known as a critical path the path through which the instruction and data will flow from the starting of an execution of an instruction till the ending right that is known as a critical path so we are <coughs> going to calculate the performance analysis of an ldr instruction in a single cycle process so for that first you need to find out the cycle time so the cycle time is uh, a cycle time means the time taken for we have already seen since it is single cycle process one instruction will execute in one cycle so what will be the time taken for one cycle that is what you are going to calculate so time taken for one cycle is nothing but time taken for the instruction or data to move from the starting of the program counter right then it will be moving like this it will move through the program counter then it will move through the instruction memory it will move through the decoder then it will move through the multiplexer register file and the alu similarly one more path is there from the decoder so this path is used for taking the base address and this path is used for getting the offset and both will be added here then finally the result will be flowing through the data memory through the multiplexer back to the file register right so the time taken for the execution to move from here to here that is known as a cycle time right when the instruction will be moved from here to here in one cycle so time taken for that one cycle is calculated here so time taken for that one cycle will be the delay taken in each logical element so the time taken for moving the instruction from here to here is the time uh, time taken by the sum of delay generated in the PC, in instruction memory, in decoder, then multiplexer, etc. When you are adding all the delay elements in, uh, in this path, you will be getting the cycle time. Right? So here you can see that first the instruction will be read. First the address will be read to the PC. Based on that address, the instruction present in that address in the instruction memory will be read out right so a program counter will be pointing to the uh, current instruction so that instruction will be read out from the instruction memory then that instruction will be decoded in this decoder and control unit based on that two paths will be there one path will be used for sending the offset so our offset address will be speci specified in a, in a register so the offset address will be moving through this and the register source will be zero so the source address 
which is given in the uh, bit number 16 to 19 this is a source address or the uh, base address of an LDR instruction we have already seen this so the base address of the LDR instruction will be moving through this path right so uh, through the control unit then through the multiplexer that base address will be given to the register file right so whatever base address is stored in the uh, register file that will be sent out through this as a source a so the content of the base address will be given as source a to the alu to this base address you need to add the offset so offset will be gen will be generated in the sign extension right so for that immediate source control signal should be given right so the source address will be generated here uh, not the source address the uh, the, uh, the um, offset address so offset address will be moving from here right so offset address will be moving from uh, moving through the sign extension and through the multiplexer to the alu base address will be moving through the multiplexer register file to alu so from here you are having two paths one is through the multiplexer uh, then uh, through the register file to the alu another path is this that is through the sign extension and the multiplexer through the alu and both the operation will be done here then that result will be moving through the data memory through this multiplexer and the result will be written back right so the total cycle time will be is equal to is equal to tcq tcq underscore pc means this shows the delay time uh, taken in the PC TCQ P, uh, PC right so this is a delay time that is occurred that is uh, taken in the PC plus the delay time that is occurred uh, that is uh, taken place in the memory that is T memory then yeah, that instruction is moving to a decoder so time taken in the decoder will be T decoder then from here two paths are there one is through the multiplexer and register file another one is through the sign extension and multiplexer so when you are calculate the time taken for the uh, execution of one cycle you should take the maximum time taken in both these paths so that is what maximum of first part that is t multiplexer plus t t r t r f read means t uh, register file read so time taken in the multiplexer that is t max then time taken for the register file to read so maximum of these two added together and so this is one path you are adding the time taken in the multiplexer time taken for f read and that is one uh, time taken and the other path is time taken in the uh, extension at uh, the sign extension block and the multiplexer that is tx extension plus t multiplexer so when you are adding these two you will get one time one time period when you are adding these two you will be getting another time period so maximum of any of this path right so one, first path is like this through multiplexer and register file another path is through sign extension and multiplexer so you need to add the multiplexer and the time taken for read you will be getting another one time then when you are adding the time taken for sign extension and multiplexer you will be getting another time so when you are taking the critical path or for calculation of the time cycle you need to find the maximum of these two values right then so maximum of these two then the time taken for the alu then the time taken for memory after that time taken for the multiplexer finally the setup time taken for the register to store that value so when you are adding all these things together you will be getting a time taken for the one cycle to execute in a single cycle process that is shown by tc1 and you are assuming that the time taken for executing something in alu and reading something from memory and the register file time taken these three operations will be taking more time when compared to the combination logic right so accessing alu memory and register these will be taking more time when compared to other condition logic so you can so you can take 
this as the maximum value because here you are having a register file read so definitely the time taken by the multiplexer and register file read will be more than the sign extension and the multiplexer time that is what is shown here value memory and register file access will take more time than the other other combination logic so you can take this because you are calculating maximum of these two value so you can take this value <coughs> you can discard this one right so final equation will be tcpq plus t memory plus t decoder plus t max plus t r f read plus t alu t memory t max t r f setup so when you are adding these two you will be getting t t c q p p c then two memory read memory access is there so 2 into t memory then t decoder plus t f read plus t a l u then 2 multiplexer reading is there right so 2 multiplexer time taken plus r f setup the final equation is this so by substituting the value in this equation you can you will be getting the time taken for one cycle of execution of an instruction right then this table shows all the delays in all this uh, uh, components so tpcq will be taking 40 picosecond register setup will be taking this register file setup will be taking this like that all the delays in each of the circuit element is given so it is uh, so we are uh, i am giving an uh, uh, problem consider a single cycle processor built on a 16 nanometer technology you are asked to compute the execution time for a program with 100 billion instruction by using this equation you can calculate the execution time for a cycle particular cycle right so for a particular cycle this will be the time taken that or that means if we are executing an instruction it will take for this will be the time taken for execution of a cycle or an execution of an instruction in a single cycle processor since it is a single cycle processor one instruction will execute in one cycle so this will be the time taken for one cycle of execution that means for one instruction to execute this will be the time taken so here you are asked to calculate time taken for 100 million instruction right so what you will do you need to find out the time taken for instruction one instruction then you need to multiply the number of instruction so for that so this is a solution for that problem so first you are calculating the cycle time that is the time taken for one instruction in this processor right how will you do this is the equation all the values of these are given here so when you are substituting this tcq as 40 2 into t memory 200 T decoder 70, T R F read 100, T A L U 120, 2 into multiplexer 25 plus R F setup 60, you will be getting 840 picosecond as time taken for one instruction to execute. So for execution, for finding out the execution time for a complete program having 100 million instruction, this will be the equation. Execution time equal to number of instructions into cycles per instruction that means how many cycle you are having in one instruction since it is a single cycle processor you are having only one instruction per instru one cycle per instruction then how many number of how many seconds are there in one cycle that is what you have calculated here 840 picoseconds are there are, uh, that much time is taken for one cycle right so first one is number of instruction that is 100 into 10 raised to 9 that is 100 billion instruction into cycles per instruction since it is a single cycle processor cycles per instruction will be one one cycle per instruction that is one then seconds per one cycle how much time is taken for one cycle that is 800 into 10 raised to minus 12 seconds per cycle so when you are multiplying all these things you will get it as 84 second so this is a time taken for execution of a program having 100 million instructions 
right uh, which is executed in a single cycle process so this is how you are evaluating the performance of a single cycle processor